Joining me now is W.E. Murner. He is the chemistry and applied physics professor at Stanford University. And you are also the 2014, uh, one of the 2014 Nobel Prize winners in chemistry. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. You're speaking here on subgroup Saturday, one of the 14 subgroups. Um, tell us about uh, the subgroup you're participating in and what will your talk be about? Great, I'm talking about the, in the nanoscale biophysics subgroup and I'm talking about single molecules and super resolution microscopy. So our area of work has both those concepts built into it. That is, uh, single molecules were first observed uh, more than 25 years ago in my lab. And many people use single molecules to do biophysical studies. But super resolution uh, based on single molecules is, is the area that I'm also going to talk about uh, during this, this presentation. Basically, while lots of people at this meeting know about super resolution, what is important to remember the quantitative aspects of this technique. Uh, we are very interested in my lab trying to make sure that everything that we say is very accurate as well as precise. So there's a number of ways that we're exploring how to extract more and more information from single molecules to make better super resolution images. This, this is all directly related to nanoscale biophysics because it all starts with those individual nanoscale objects, single fluorescent molecules, which are about a nanometer in size. And uh, this approach gives us access to you know, these shapes in, that are inside cells uh, that are on the order of 10 nanometers or 20 or 40 nanometers in size. So because there are such small, interesting enzymes and motors and so forth doing their job inside cells, we need these methods to, to look on the proper spatial scale to see what's going on. Now, uh, another goal of my talk is, is to sort of remind people that just looking at individual molecules, not doing imaging to find structures, but to observe their motions, is a, still a very important dynamical problem. And we can learn a lot just by watching how single molecules move, and I'll give some examples of that in my talk. So with that being said then, what is the next step in your research? Where do you see this going in, let's say, five years? So the beautiful thing about super resolution microscopy is that it represents a, a factor of five or 10 improvement beyond the diffraction limit, which limited fluorescence microscopy be, before this work. So this basically means that we need to measure almost every process that may have been imaged previously uh, at the poor resolution to see what's really there. We, we see much, much more each time we use this method. So there's a huge range of applications that need to be completed to look at cell biology on the 10, 20 nanometer scale with, with light and in, at sometimes even in living cells. Uh, that's clearly one big part of the future. And uh, f furthermore, since an individual molecule is a uh, is a nanoscale ultimate object. If we watch single molecules moving, we will learn a lot more about mechanisms inside uh, a variety of biological systems. So in closing, if there was one takeaway that you want attendees to know or learn from your talk, what would that be? Uh, I would say we need to continue to study single molecules. There's so much more to be done to learn about their, their orientations and their behaviors because they give us a window into the nanoscale inside cells. W.E. Murner, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.